Today we're going to be dividing with decimals when there's one on the outside, when there's one on the inside, and when there's one in both, the outside and the inside. We're going to go through your steps one step at a time. First one that we're going to start with is just a regular division problem. If there's only a decimal on the inside, for example, if you have 12 decimal 36 divided by 12. So we have 12 and 36 hundredths divided by 12. You just write the problem down so far. Here's going to be your step. Only decimal on inside. Only decimal on the inside. Here's what you'll do. Bring decimal straight up. You bring the decimal straight up. So, right here, there's not a decimal on here. So this decimal is going to go straight up. Then, You divide. So 12 won't go into 1, but 12 will go into 12 one time. You bring down your 3. Now, you're going to notice, I didn't mention anything about that decimal, because now that we brought it straight up, you basically pretend like it's not there. So 12 won't go into 3. So we put a 0 above that. 0 times 12 is 0. And now, bring down your 6, and 12 going to 36 three times. 3 times 12 is 36. When I subtract, I get nothing. So, I'm done. If you only have a decimal on the inside, you just bring it straight up, and then you divide. Now, if there's a decimal on the outside and on the inside, let's get that one. Decimal inside and outside. So, let's go ahead and use the same number. This time, we're going to have one decimal two divided into 12.36. Decimal on the outside, decimal on the inside. Here's your steps. Move the outside decimal over to the end. You move the outside decimal over to the end. And what I mean by that is you're going to take this decimal and you're going to move it back here so that it's at the end before you go on the inside. So in this case, I would move it over one time. If I move this one once, I've got to move this one once and then I'm going to bring it straight up. So, the step for that would be, then move the inside decimal, the same 
amount. Move this one over once. Move this one over once. So then move the inside decimal the same amount. Bring decimal straight up. So, move this one once, move that one once, bring it straight up. And what do you think is going to happen now? You're right. You just divide. So I'm going to go ahead and divide. This is now just 12. You can just pretend like that decimal is no longer there. 12 won't go into 1. We'll go into 12 one time. And 12 times 1 is 12. Subtract get 0. Bring down my 3. Again, don't worry about the decimal. We don't have to anymore. 12 won't go into 3, so a 0 has to go up there. And 0 times 12 is 0. You subtract, and you get 3. And now, you're going to bring down your 6. 12 will go into 36 three times. And you have to make sure that 3 goes above that 6, because remember we had to use that last digit. So 12 times 3 is 36. I subtract and I get 0. So, you move the decimal, bring it straight up, then you divide. Let's do a couple of more. Two numbers on the outside. So we're going to have decimal 1, 2 going into 1, 2, decimal 3, 6. Now this time we have two numbers on the outside. So we're going to move that decimal two times. I'm going to move it two places to the end. And if I move this one twice, then this one gets moved twice. Then bring it straight up. Now you can pretend like the decimals are no longer there. So 12 will not go into 1. 12 will go into 12 once. Bring down your 3. 12 will not go into 3, so 0 goes up here. And now Bring down your 6. So 12 will go into 36 three times. Again, you need to make sure that you keep all of your numbers lined up. It's going to make it a lot easier for you to divide. Moved it twice, moved it twice, and brought it straight up. Let's try another one. This time, let's go with the decimal 1, 2. And we're going to go... One, two, three, decimal six. Well, I have two numbers behind the decimal, so I need to move it to the end. So, one, two. This one I also need to move two times. So, one, two. Remember, empty loops always get a zero. And then you bring it straight up. So it looks like I'm going to have to extend that a little bit. Now, pretend like your decimal's not there, and just divide. So 12 will not go into 1. Bring your 2 down. It will go into 12 once. Bring down my 3. 12 will not go into 3 again. So, 0 must go up there. Now bring down your 6. 12 will go into 36 three times. I have nothing left over. But be careful, you're not finished. I have nothing left over, but I still have something up here to bring down. So, 
That zero has to come down. Will 12 go into that zero? No. So a zero must go up there. And the zero times the 12 is zero. Now I have nothing left over. I have nothing to bring down. So I'm done. So my final answer is one, zero, three, zero with the decimal behind it. Pretty good? All right. I think you got it. Remember, move your decimal over to the end, no matter how many times, and then you have to move the decimal on the inside the same amount. Let's try one more. This time, let's have it so that we have two numbers behind the decimal on the outside. And we have no numbers behind the decimal on the inside. Where is the decimal? You're right. The decimal goes right there. So I move over the decimal two times. I also have to move this one over two times. And what are those empty loops going to get? Zeros. Straight up. Then just divide. Will not go. We'll go one time. Well go. Remember when it will go, zero goes up there. Bring down your six. Twelve will go to thirty-six three times. Am I finished? You're right. I still have things to bring down. Even if it is a zero. So how many times is twelve going to go into the zero? Zero times. still have another zero to bring down. 12 will go into this zero, zero times. I'm done. I have nothing left over. I have nothing to bring down. So this would be my final answer. One, zero, three, zero, zero. Decimals do mean a lot. So please make sure that you move them the correct amount of spaces. See you next time.